Thanks for joining us this Easter Monday. Frank Holmes is our guest today for Gold Game Film, and we'll be talking about whether gold will hit peak production in 2015. Also, the metal topping 1200. He joins us now. Frank, good to be back with you. Yeah, so we had tonight March Madness, the super game, and the upset. Kentucky's out, and uh, is Wisconsin's playing. It's fantastic. Awesome, Frank. Well, hopefully some of that energy will spill over into the gold market. Let's talk the jobs report now. Obviously very disappointing, but still helping gold's case here. Well, what happens really is that, is that it slows down the economy. That, that data point is giving a reflection that the U.S. economy is not on a tear like people were expecting it to, to be. So I think that uh, falling oil prices, cut in expiration, cutting a lot of things has an impact in job creation. I think the weather issues on the East Coast, I think the port strike on the West Coast, and I think the overall strong dollar is, imp is impacting exports. So that is all those four factors have come together to show that the economy is not on a tear. Okay, so that leads me to ask you two follow-up questions here, Frank. First, we saw a weaker dollar emerge right after the jobs report. Is that temporary or here for a longer term? Well, I think right now it's just noise because the dollar on a relative basis to uh, the other G7 countries, which have an addiction, they're all addicted, this unconventional monetary policy of zero interest rates and blowing out their monetary base. So with that, when we put the G7 up against each other, America still has the highest real rates of return. So their currency should stay stronger than the euro. And the backdrop of Greece, when you look at the credit default swap numbers, it's a good reflection of risk in Greece is still at all time highs. And look at three year money, three year money is over 10%. Sorry, I'm pushing 23%, 23% in Greece. So if something happens with Greece that would unravel the euro, that would make the dollar strong by default. So I think one can't just get negative on the dollar uh, in that sort of blown away because it really does have the most attractive rates in this very low interest rate environment. All right, Frank, well, my second question has to do with the Fed. And they finally spoke out this morning. William Dudley, president of the New York Federal Reserve today, said that whether or not March's jobs report uh, points to a substantial slowdown in the U.S. economy uh, still remains unclear. Now, Dennis Gartman, uh, the newsletter writer, said that following the jobs report, he's even more confident now that the Fed won't be able to tighten in June and probably not even in September. And I know that's something that you've also been saying. I was saying it for a while, and I will maintain that. Um, that the world is still very fragile uh, economically because it's a different model than pre-2008, uh, which was all about fiscal global stimulus, trade, 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 and now it's monetary, and it has very different outcomes. So I, I think that we're going to see these low interest rates for a while, um, and I think that we're going to continue to see gold being accumulated. Now, what's really important for gold in this theme of gold is it appears that China has been pushing to make the renminbi a world-class currency, a currency of trade. It's now convertible. We've commented on your program before to, to, uh, to Singaporean dollar. It's getting, it's already Hong Kong a while ago, years ago, and now Singapore. Uh, to really become a world-class currency, you have to have gold backing it. And that's what the dollar has. So I think you're going to continue to see this sort of tectonic shift take place of China consuming more and more gold. Frank, well, you have said that Chinese gold inflows hit record levels for the first quarter of the year. And if it stays on pace, it could reach 2,300 tons or more in 2015, which would be a new record. They could. And I think the operative word is really inflows. Inflows into China, outflows out of North America and Europe and other sort of governments that are very socialist in their mindset and just sell the gold uh, to buy voters like Argentina's done. And it's only been a disaster in these countries. Betting against gold's recent rally, however, Frank, are hedge funds and are holding a record short wager that prices will decline. Yes, I, and I, I see that. And I think there's a lot of what they call auto correlation of looking at the real interest rates in the US versus the euro versus the yen and gold. And uh, right now they feel it's better to have gold, gold as a currency. So that's that trade. But I don't think it's, um, it's a sustainable trade. I, I, I don't, you know, some people are saying gold is falling under $1,000. Um, that would that would really surprise me. But gold going plus or minus 
$150, that's going to, it's, it's normal DNA of volatility. All right, Frank, getting to our ops and threats segment of the show now, starting with opportunities. I selected this one, a recent forecast by Goldman Sachs that 2015 might just be the year that gold production peaks. Well, in a lot of my analysis, I think gold has peaked in that production. The companies that we follow, uh, there's lots of other private production that seems to change those numbers. But from what we've seen in, in the 88 gold mining producers we follow, uh, they peaked. So I think from that end, uh, yes, according to their data points, it's going to be, and there's been no big discoveries. Danielle, there's no, they spent $100 an ounce and they found nothing of material to bring gold into production. And the lack of stability in it, where they found big deposits, governments can change the uh, rules, so therefore these mines don't go into production. But Frank, if you attend a lot of these mining company presentations, everyone has the next great big discovery this year. From their lips to God's ears. All right, Frank, on the threat side now, tis the season for research firms to be putting out their forecasts. One of them, Metals Focus, says that if the U.S. dollar continues its strength, it could push down bullion to uh, 1,080 an ounce this year. Frank, my question is not whether or not you think they're right, but with so many research firms putting out their forecasts, who do you listen to? Well, I like to take a look at the average and uh, understand them. So some of them are interest rate driven. They're looking at the dollar, which is driven by interest rates versus the euro and the yen. Other people are looking at supply and demand factors for gold, and others are looking at global economic activity. So it's trying to understand what sort of uh, factors they use to have a call on the price of gold. All right, Frank, well, to wrap your touchdown pass for the week, what's it going to be? Uh, it's going to be words, 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 and the words are coming from Yellen, and she's going to be yelling on Wednesday when Fed notes come out, and, and all those computer systems are going to glean through there and try to look for words that that give some forecast to the price of gold. Definitely Wednesday, the day to watch this week. And I wish you luck uh, for tonight with your basketball. Hey, listen, you know, upsets happen all the time. And Kentucky was a big, big upset. In capital markets, upsets happen all the time. It's normal. But what I really think for your, your uh, viewers is they should be using this Kitco site at the bottom trail down and watching this and take a look at gold and other countries' currencies. That's what we do all the time. Gold is up or down, strong in the dollar. It's immediately to take a look at how's it doing against the euro, how's it doing against the yen, etc. And it helps put things in context. And thanks so much for watching this edition of Gold Game Film. We'll see you tomorrow.